Coming up on today's Airborne, Wing X Pro releases version 8. Robinson Helicopter Company delivers 500 R66 helicopters. And SpaceX's launch to the ISS is reset for March 30th. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Hang on to your iPad because the supercharger kicks in when you upgrade to Wing X Pro version 8. Wing X Pro has added instrument approach procedure routing to its aviation application. Instrument approach procedure routing enables pilots to select an instrument approach and have Wing X Pro 7 automatically insert the instrument approach procedures fixes into the route. Pilots using Wing X Pro 7 can plan a flight using a departure procedure, standard terminal arrival route, instrument approach procedure, and also any number of intermediate fixes and airways. Wing X Pro 7 enables pilots to easily select the initial DP fix, DP and star transitions, and the approach initial approach fix to provide the exact routing from takeoff to landing. Version 8 enhancements also include Bluetooth support for Wing X Pro 7 for Pebble watches, user documents and Wing X Pro's split screen, moving map performance enhancements, and support for additional ADS-B receivers. Robinson Helicopters just doesn't seem to understand that the aviation business is down as they just keep on delivering helicopters. The 500th R66 turbine helicopter rolled off of Robinson's production line on March 14th, three and a half years after the five-place helicopter was initially certificated in October of 2010. The helicopter was delivered to Avia Market, one of three R66 dealers in Russia. Avia Market successfully tested the aircraft's capabilities last year. First in April, when Avia Market pilots landed an R66 at the North Pole. And again in September, when the company organized a six-week around-the-world expedition using two R66 helicopters. To meet expanding market demands, over 100 R66 service centers and 68 R66 dealers have been established worldwide. Glass and touchscreen avionics were recently added to the R66 options list, and Robinson's engineered floats and cargo hook are currently undergoing final testing. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Dodging junk in space may sound like a science fiction plot from the popular movie Gravity, but when the International Space Station had to move its position for that very reason, SpaceX had to reschedule a planned supply run. SpaceX has confirmed it will target its next cargo mission launch to the International Space Station from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida for 10.50 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on March 30th. This mission will be SpaceX's third resupply flight to the orbiting outpost and will also allow SpaceX to test some new features on the first stage of the Falcon 9 that will eventually allow for the re-entry, landing, return, and refurbishment of whole sections of the vehicle. 
With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. You have blended some of the more interesting features of gyroplanes and helicopters in this machine. Is it a gyroplane or a helicopter or both? Whatever it is, this interview with Dick DeGraw is fascinating. Search Dick DeGraw's Jump Takeoff Gyro on Aero TV's news channel. Garmin has a new goodie for aircraft home builders, and it's called the G3X Touch. The non-certified G3X Touch system offers pilots an easy-to-read, easy-to-use, high-resolution 10.6-inch flight display with a host of advanced interface options. The Touch is scalable and easily configurable. Pilots can choose to install up to three G3X touch displays in their panel. The display offers a resilient sunlight-readable screen. The G3X touch display provides pilots with an intuitive split-screen mode with the option to view MFD and engine information on a single display. Synthetic vision is a standard feature. A version of G3X Touch also includes Cirrus XM aviation weather and radio capability. The Touch can interface with Garmin's GTR20 remote transceiver and a Garmin standalone GMC305 autopilot. Owners of the current G3X have the opportunity to easily upgrade to the G3X Touch. You get all the bells and whistles for an experimental airplane without paying the price of a TSO certified unit. Airborne's brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. The Reno Air Racing Association Board of Directors published a letter that reviews the past and looks forward to the future. They said that last year was an overwhelming and poignant success with fans from all around the world joining to revel in the historic aviation celebration. They added that the Reno Air Racing Association is committed to preserving and growing this event. The letter said that new and exciting changes are planned for this year's event and that details will be announced soon. The teaser is expect to see concerts, expanding the number of races, increasing displays of military aircraft, and creating exciting and innovating interactive experiences for the fans. The letter concluded with this statement, quote, This year we are inviting you to rally with us as we race on into the future of air racing. End quote. The big question revolves around how an audience that once came to Reno for serious air racing will deal with an event that seeks to spread its appeal across other aviation and non-aviation offerings. The FAA has issued a new airworthiness directive that is superseding the previously issued AD 2009-1603 aimed at superior air parts replacement cylinders for Continental engines. This original AD was issued for certain Continental IO-520, TSIO-520, and IO-550 series reciprocating engines. This new AD requires that additional engines be added to the applicability. 
The agency says the AD was prompted by the need to add to the applicability all other engine models approved for the use of Continental 520 and 550 cylinder assemblies, such as the Continental 470 series engines when modified by supplemental type certificate with the affected superior air part cylinder assemblies installed. Get out your wallet, folks, because the FAA estimates that this AD affects 6,000 engines, and the total cost of this AD to U.S. operators is calculated to be $14.1 million. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.